The Chiefs are a different franchise in 1999. There are one or two new faces, Blair Feeney and Dylan Meeker, to name a couple. But their team is the basis of the Waikato side, Rangley Shield holders and NPC finalists. No Jonah Lomu tonight, but Reese Duggan returns from the Highlanders. And there's the experience of 126 test matches that North Harbour's Walter Little Ian Jones bring to the side. A new captain there, number one in Michael Collins. And a strong looking bench for the Chiefs. And that really is the basis of Super 12 this year. It's not just the 15 on the park, it's the other seven on the bank as well. Well, that's right. The mix is so important. We hear players talking about impact, coaches talking about impact players and how vital they are in this game today. And the ball boy, of course, he's played a part for years. And here he is, Todd Blackadder. Now, listen for this welcome as the defending champions make their first appearance in 1999. Two key players missing as the playing through champions start their campaign. Mark Mayerhofer and Norm Berryman, both sidelined with injury. All Black Caleb Ralph has arrived in town to shore up the midfield, while Leon McDonald returns from the Chiefs, and exciting Afato Saalo takes his place on the wing after injury destroyed last season for him. A very familiar look about the pack with only prop Greg Somerville, a newcomer at this level. And the captain, as usual, is Todd Blackadder. Once again, a very strong bench for the Crusaders with All Black Scott Robertson, one of the forward reserves tonight. Yes, and don't they know how to play here at Jade Stadium? And that man there, Todd Blackadder, inspirational as a leader, playing in lock tonight. Unaccustomed in that position, he has played there a few times, but he is a blindside. And there he is, Justin Marshall. His link up with Andrew Merton's there, number 10, will be critical for the Crusaders here tonight. Huge crowd at Jade Stadium. Big welcome to our viewers around the world. Fox Sport and Channel 7 in Australia. Super Sports in South Africa. Sky Sport in Britain. J Sky B in Japan. ESPN Star in Asia. Fox Sport North and South America. And Canal Plu in France. The referee, Paul Honus. And assisted tonight by Neville McAllister and Glenn Wallstrom. Away we go. Super 12 1999. The rugby season is underway. And Dion Muir gets the first touch for the Chiefs. Barreled inside the 22. Reese Duggan to clear it away. And Blair Feeney takes us to the first line out of the season. Well, very aggressive defence or attacking defence by the Crusaders there. Launching in to uh, the Chiefs. But a good clearance by Feeney. Important. He starts well tonight for the Chiefs' cause. The wonderful line-out battles in prospect here tonight. Ian Jones and Royce Willis for the Chiefs. Norm Maxwell, Todd Blackadder for the Crusaders. Having Todd Blackadder in the middle, of course, puts a lot of pressure on this man here. There he goes. Maxwell cleanly. Merton shovels it on. Out in the midfield. There it is, there it is. Yeah, balls out, balls out. Cleared away again for Merton. Racing across is Todd Miller. Inside is 22, and he claims the mark. Yeah, well done by Todd Miller there. Midfield ruck, very hard for fullbacks to read, but Miller read it well and uh, was safe under the high ball. He's always timed the ball so well. This Not in touch, on. though. Here's uh, Mertens sparking it for Soalo. Missed the whole of Super 12 last year. The okay. Western Samoan on the wing. Wait, wait. Marshall okay. again. Mertens. Miller again having to scramble near his own line. He'd be hoping this goes over the line, and it does. And back to the 22 we go. But so far, it's all the Crusaders as they play into this uh, light breeze in the first half. Our man on the sideline, Smithy. Yeah, you're right, Miss Bobo. Just the slightest of breezes, though. I don't think it's going to be a factor at all. Ground conditions absolutely perfect. The grass level, as I said before, has been cut for cricket, really, so there's hardly any grass at all. The rugby players might just find this a little greasy on top. Bit of rain in Christchurch uh, during the day. Chiefs have uh, possession of the ball. Maurice Duggan, who was with the Highlanders last year. Feeney looking for the wide open spaces behind Soalo. And now, did he push that forward? Got the call from the touch judge who said no. Soalo. Tremendous.
first burst as he found Mark Hammett, 10 metres inside the 22. Looking for quick ball, but the head high tackle is ruled. And Fato Saolo has caused damage already. Break up, break up. Uh, break up, break up. Thank you. Away we go. If we go back to this okay. phase of play, we see McLeod on the deck. That came from the, the tackle, the attempted tackle. Have a look at this here. That drop might have been accidental in his boat. Have a look. Bit of a collision. McLeod taking it on the head. And just taking a bit of a moment to recover. So powerful, the little left winger. And he brushed off Scott McLeod. Good support there from Mark Hammett. But he was taken in the head high tackle. And we have the first to penalty attempt coming up from Andrew Mertens. Corresponding game last season. Mertens had an absolute nightmare at Albany. Game won by the Chiefs. Nails at first time. Yes, and it's a different thing, isn't it, on his home ground. Andrew Mertens, of course, he's slotted many through those uprights. It's a good way to start for a goal kicker. Tell us about that first kick first time, Greg. Well, it so, is so important, isn't it? And this is competition time. It's not uh, warm-up games. And for Andrew Mertens, as uh, most goal kickers, certainly confidence is very, very important. And he'll be very happy with that first uh, shot at goal. Leofini just gets at the 10 metres. And the ball lost forward by the Crusaders. So here's the first real opportunity for the Chiefs. Well, Norman Maxwell, he's an exponent of taking the kick off, always been strong. And of course, he's under a little bit of pressure there, isn't he, Maxwell? Because Todd Blackadder has never specialised in taking the kick off, so it means he's really got to compete. He's got to be flexible to move around. Obviously, the, the direction of the kick is important. Come up, come up. Murray, another key uh, part for the Chiefs tonight, scrum time. The Highlanders were able to put a bit of pressure on in a warm-up game last week in Invercargill. Chiefs will need to start well in this phase of play. And so much said about it midweek too, whether the Chiefs actually can handle it up front. Let's keep, let's keep our backs straight. Let's keep One or two straight. new interpretations in the law of the game. These guys tend to swap a little in this competition. And I think we're going to see... Certainly the interpretation now in the Southern Hemisphere, Murray, is if the ball doesn't come out of the scrum immediately, the whistle goes. Yes, we've been lectured, the commentators have been lectured on the referee's attitude towards this ruling. So the idea is as soon as it collapses or pops up, the referee blows his whistle. Let's have a listen to Paul Honus. Just give a two, please, Red. Hey, guys, we start on the wrong foot. This is no good. It's just very simple. I'll make a mark, I'll ask you to hold in the crouch, and then I'll call engage. All right? No, I just want to get you guys sitting in the crouch first, then I'll pull and gauge, OK? Let's just slow it down and do it right. You look at the uh, Chiefs' backs there, lined up deep, and both Miller and Ray Hahn are in shot, so both of them looking to get involved. One of them, no doubt, will be a decoy runner. Well, he wasn't happy, Paul Honus, so he comes up with the free kick. Greg Feek and Greg Somerville. So that's the 10 metre line in Crusaders territory. Duggan organising the troops. Royce Willis lurking there. Gives it away instead to Feeney. This will come down just near the 22. McDonald up after it. Chiefs in possession though. So Duggan able to feed it away. Feeney with a drop kick. And against the post it goes. Kerr brings it down for the Crusaders. Counter attack coming up here. Good support coming from Gardner. Marshall. 10 metre line. Chiefs territory. Pops out for Mertens. Indecision. A bolt up Andrew Mertens. Driving on goes Greg Somerville. Get off from gold. Here it comes. Marshall back in position. Maxwell takes it on the charge. 18 metres out. Marshall looking for a man inside, finding Reuben Thorne. 
Quickly to the ball again, the Crusaders. Keeps having to hang on. Mertens back in field for Daryl Gibson. Working it towards midfield. And the referee says, time for a scrum. Big counter-attack. Yeah, well, that's the danger of, uh, of the Crusaders. But the Chiefs really were the architects of their own demise there by not following that drop kick up from Feeney. And the Crusaders give them a little bit of room. And they'll take it, and they did on that occasion. So it's a great attacking opportunity here from the scrum. About seven or eight metres left of the left-hand upright. So, as you can see, there's two players out on the short side. Plenty of gas there for sure. And Canterbury deep on the open side. So they've got all options here. And the Chiefs, of course, turning the scrum to, to narrow down the options to one way. Surridge. Marshall was lurking on the blind side. Now they're going to keep coming blind side. Merton's quick hands. Big tackle by Roger Randall. Marshall drags it out again for Mertens. On it goes to Gardner. Good thumping tackle on Angus Gardner. Turned over. Now the Chiefs, perhaps they can counter-attack. Walter Little. Dragging players with him. Ball lost forward. Playing an advantage. Gibson. Surridge can't hang on. Referee will go back. He was playing advantage anyway. And a very good advantage by uh, referee Honus there. Was on for the Crusaders. And they just didn't execute it correctly. It was a great turnover there, you'll see from that phase of play. It all came from a tackle on Gardner, where he turned, actually turned Gardner, presenting the ball for the Chiefs. Yes, it was great refereeing by Paul Honus, Greg. He played advantage on two occasions here, allowing the game to move if it was possible. So and that's why I can tell you there's a problem here for Michael Collins. He's got a cut above the right eye. So uh, on the sideline warming up with David Briggs for the Chiefs. It's interesting to note, I've seen three or four players slip already at ground level. It's pretty hard to change direction, particularly on defence. Saw Bruce Rahan already looking at his sprigs on a couple of occasions. And I think that could be a factor as well. Going backwards and changing directions might be a little tough on the surface. Certainly a little greasy on top. The Chiefs have their support here as well. Leon McDonald's been out of action in back play for the Crusaders, but he's back now. And David Briggs is on on the far side. Michael Collins, the captain, out of it for the moment. Just wait. Engage. Advantage obviously was over because it's Chiefs ball. Come up, fellas. I'm going the far side. We're going to sort it out. Really struggling with these scrums at the moment. Yes, there's a real battle going on between uh, the loose end, which is Greg Fig from Canterbury, and Paul Martin. As you can see, Martin down on his knees and blind backwards on that one. Standing up, standing up. Yeah, tight end stood up. Okay, stood up. It's in collapse. Yep, yeah, in collapse. Well, it's against the tight end prop. That's uh, Paul Martin for standing up. Let's have a look. Well, we can see him go down there, and then Feek had no mercy. Interesting, because the scrum before, really, it looked like Feek was having the problems. I can tell you something else too, uh, Nisbo, fellas, that uh, they might have had a few pre-season games, these fellas, but some of those lungs are hurting already. The pace has started. Yes, they'll be looking for that second wind already. Also, a lot of them haven't played the 80 minutes, have they? They're coming off after 20 minutes and maybe getting 40 minutes, so it's all on tonight. This is the action time, and uh, this is where the points are had. Round one of the competition. Not this time. Andrew Merton has one out of two. Crusaders are hit by three to nil. Yes, the balance not there for uh, Andrew Merton. You can see he didn't follow through with the kick. And a little bit tentative in his second attempt tonight. Charging over the mark. And so they'll go back. It's okay for the player to charge okay. the ball down, but he's not allowed to go over the line in doing so. So Feeney with the regulation restart. Maxwell so good in those positions. Trying to control it was Blackadder. Well, excellent, excellent refereeing once again because it certainly was general play. Swinging arm, okay. The penalty begins two. Just wait, just wait. It's a swinging arm, lead two. Penalty. Swinging arm. Well, that's against Mark Hammett. He called it a swinging arm. 
Well, the game really hasn't found its structure yet, has it? There's no continuity of play, no ruck after ruck that the, the Crusaders like to play. Also, the Chiefs players like Ray Harner, likes, they like to move with the ball. We just haven't had the continuity of play. Often the first couple of minutes you get an indication of ascendancy from one team or the other, but there's certainly nothing, nothing to indicate what's ahead of us in this game. Greg Smith, Dion Muir. 10-metre line in Crusaders territory. They haven't really been able to mount a decent attack yet. There's uh, the ball going forward and Muir standing in an offside position. But uh, they take the knock on first. The yeah, Muir obviously very surprised to get that ball standing in a... In a well, he was offside with the position he was standing. Look at the big long kick by, uh, by Andrew Mertens. Just hold there. The option they also have there is uh, Gibson. He can also can kick the ball very, very strongly. Surridge controlling. Good, strong surge by Steve Surridge. Next man up is Black out of the captain. There's the halfway line. Marshall. Burtons goes blindside and gets barrels. Big tackle on him. Ian Jones it was. Andrew Mertens smack into the All Black. Very strong offensive tackle from Dylan Meeker. And on the field is Daryl Liddy. He's gone to fullback. Feeney on for Little. Up quickly on him is uh, Daryl Gibson. Little looks like he might have been turned. And the Crusaders get it. There's a more winter ground, guys. Unplayable. So it's written all over his face, isn't it? He's taking a bang in the head. Leon McDonald goes to first 5 8. Now Surridge tries to hand off Glenn Marsh. Now McDonald, who's had plenty of experience in that position at first 5 8. Justin Marshall has certainly had better service so far in the game. Daryl Lilly, an early touch. Nice little kick from Lilly. Just couldn't bring it under control, but Marshall's got it. But he lost it forward to Lilly. Almost sparked a brilliant movement. Yes, Lilly, a very good footballer. And seeing that the defence of the Chiefs were very deep, so he put it in behind and just unable to control it there. He had set up nicely too. Well, Lily's often been used as one of these impact players. He comes on, he can do something immediately. Dion Muir, low to the ground. Dragged down well, though, by Angus Gardner. Feeney, thought about kicking, shoveled it on a little. The kick is inaccurate from all to little. Yeah, that wasn't much better. No, Lily's kick's no good either. So now, Todd Miller. Hard man to pull down normally, but Lily makes amends. And he's getting a decent working over too. Welcome to the season, Daryl Lilly. Kick from Feeney once again. Down to James Kerr, the hero of the championship win last season. Now the crowd reckoned that he was obstructed after he kicked the ball. No call though from the touch judge or the referee. So here it is for Marshall with space to burn in Chiefs territory. Went a bit too far though, had support. And now he's on his way backwards. Get it back quickly then, quickly. When you can't have it, you took it in red, you're strong goals. Big mistake by Justin Marshall on that occasion. He had a back line lined up. He even had a player bursting off him. And he held the pass. And, and paid the price, Go didn't back. he? Have a look at this when you see it on the replay. Actually, that's way, way back though, isn't it? Yeah, some aggressive rucking here. I think Liddy's the man on the end of it all there and uh, trying to rake the ball back but Murray hasn't the uh, the kicking been inaccurate so far and I suppose it's symptomatic of an early game but uh, certainly they haven't been finding the space and the kicks haven't been deepened into the opposition territory well that's right I mean there's so few kicks these days that uh, that are playing just for tactical or tactical kicks are pl played to, to, to get the ball back and that's what's not happening they're not putting in a position where they can recover the ball. It's sort of almost aimless. Over here, guys, over here off the 
staying up on the side. Wait Andrew Burton still on the sideline for the Crusaders. They have the lead by three to nil. Crusaders with a good shove on as Feeney runs it across for McLeod. He took an early knock in the game. Hasn't really been involved since. And here is offside play. Well, it's an important Super 12 for Walter Little. A little bit out of favour in the last year. Obviously determined to get back in the frame. So many of these players are, of course. It's a big year. It's all about Foreman Super 12 for World Cup representation. Yet another poor kick. There's been a series of those so far in the game. Now Duggan. They've got a good line-up here, the Chiefs, if they can shovel it on quickly. The cloud again tried to stab it through. Not controlled by yeah, Caleb Morell. Got a ball now. Get off it, goals. On the Crusader side for Marshall. Lilly. Ralph. Half through the gap. The support was there. Get off it. Get off it. Five. Straight in. Off your feet. And that's against leave Norman it, Maxwell. Leave it. Leave it. I'm not getting you on your feet, Clyde. Wait, wait. Diving directly to ground. Feet, and... Five. The penalty to the Chiefs. Yes, that was obvious. Uh, Norman Maxwell there also. He uh, went in with his shoulder too. So uh, he's an abrasive footballer. Very, very good football with a lot of potential and uh, certainly aggressive. You may just see Maxwell number five come into shot shortly. Here he comes in. He goes off his feet. Shoulder, no arms out. And referee Honus right on the spot. Greg Smith, Ian Jones drags a clean one down for the Chiefs. Now McLeod. Len Marsh, 10 metre line in the Crusaders territory. The Chiefs haven't had the ball for any lengthy periods. Across goes Feeney, runs straight into Ralph though. And again the Crusaders have turned it over. Chance for Reuben Thorne. So Arlo, who's made one telling burst in the game already. Five metres on the Chiefs side of halfway with Marshall. And there'll be an advantage here for the Crusaders. Hand came out, impeded the pass from Justin Marshall. The advantage is still there. Here's Gibson. Beautiful ball up to Ralph. 15 out from the 22. Now the Crusaders get on a bit of a roll. Marshall frees it off to McDonald. Leon McDonald still in at first 5-8. Uh, he's a wild outside, Reece Duggan. No, he didn't have his hands on it. Let me, let me make the decision. A cut above the rest, perhaps. Well, they're getting all the tricks in early, Murray. Yes, you wouldn't want to call it concussion at this stage of the season, would you? So here's Mertens. Second penalty goal for Andrew Mertens and the Crusaders. Have the lead at Jake Stadium by 6 to nil. Yes, and I think that penalty will clear any cuts he's got. Yes, as I mentioned before, he's vital to the cause, but uh, didn't Lily do well when he came on to cover at the back there? Kickoff taken the opposite direction, and uh, they'll go to a line out. Well, as Chief so far, Greg, haven't really been able to mount anything in an offensive way. Well, I think the uh, the early the rustiness in the early game, first round match, just has shown, has shown tonight, hasn't it, Grant? But the other the other issue too, they haven't had territory, they haven't had field position. They have field position now, but they don't have the throw to the line out. And the ball also had no ball at all going forward. They haven't created one ruck or ball and produced a ball for their back line. All we want to do is put a mark, then we take the half step, please. Half step across. Todd Blackadder in the lock forward role for the Crusaders. Jumping against uh, Royce Willis. Mark Hammett and directly to Ian Jones. Well, that's great ball by Ian Jones, isn't it? One against the throw for sure. The defence was really mounting in that line out. I don't know if you noticed it, but Jones was really keen on contesting. Often defensive line outs just defend. That's all they do. They line up and blow back the opposition. But have a look at him here. Yes, he timed it beautifully, didn't it? And of course, the, the throw was bad too. I think it was meant to be going to the front of the line-out. 
Yes, they would have cheered him last year. He was in the Crusaders squad, was Blair Feeney, but here he is for the Chiefs. And he makes a good start. Six points to three, the Crusaders. He's very tentative applause from the Chiefs supporters on the sideline there. And by no means counting their chickens at this stage in the, in the Crusaders camp. But Blair Feeney is a cool, calm and collected young man. He had poise, he struck the ball smoothly and had the desired result. Merton's off the cricket block. Test match to be played here in a couple of weeks' time. Cricket test, that is. Here's Greg Somerville, the New Zealand coach. He made that surprise appearance for Canterbury in the NPC semi-final against the Waikato. Merton's on for Daryl Gibson. Get off it, get off it! Marshall up for Mertens, reluctant to take them on now, Andrew Mertens, who can blame him, as uh, the whistle is gone. A strong defence again uh, by, the, by the Chiefs, Walter Little on that occasion. Still looking for the first try in Super 12, 1999. Blair Feeney from inside his 22. McDonald guiding it across the touchline. Amazing what a, uh, a goal kick will do. It's a firstly, first nicely timed kick by Feeney, and that is the desired result. That is what the Chiefs are looking for back into the Crusaders' half. There was a better scrum on that occasion by the Chiefs too. It's the first one that they've held steady on their ball. Decent ball for their backs actually to position the ball, which Feeney did, of course. Dylan Meeker, blindside flanker. Very disappointing in 1998, Dylan Meeker. Had a big season in 1997. Hammett. With some difficulty, the Crusaders have it near their 22. Marshall for Mert. Leave him, leave him. Again, they jam it in behind the defence. Beautifully controlled by Ray Hanna, who's dangerous from broken play. 10 metres out from the 22. Big chance here for the Chiefs. Now Feeney on for McLeod. Hit hard on the tackle and loses it. McDonald up for Angus Gardner. Marshall drags it out. Mertens. Mertens with his pace. Can't quite make it. Excellent covering tackle made by Scott McLeod. Hands off, hands off! A tackle that really had to be made. Dragged out by Blackadder. Now play it four. Here we come. Marshall again. Up for James Kerr, who's ventured in from the right wing side. Keen to keep the ball in hand, but it's handled on the ground by the Chiefs. Well, it may not be pretty, but there's certainly intensity in the defence out there. Both sides are tackling strongly. Muir in amongst it. McLeod making some tackles. All of them are putting their body on the line tonight. And broken phase is so competitive. Both teams are only just holding on to their ball. They take it in. There's so much competition from the opposition that I just noticed the Crusaders on that occasion had three rucks in a row. And three times they almost lost. And of course the last one they did lose. But as the ref said, was played by a Chiefs player on the deck. That's the go Drags it down nicely for the Crusaders great place to win the ball too at the back of the line out because it naturally turns like that. Gives them an opportunity perhaps to get towards the, uh, the Chiefs' backs, but they've still got it under control, rolling it forward. In fact, not so much control now, is there? Now there it is. Marshall away for Mertens. They're all there. But again, on the rather slippery surface. Good early I tend to feel he's got to clear the ball or go. One or the other, not halfway house. Stay on, sir. Pulls away to the blind side, Marshall. Now he's gone to the Pulls open. Out. 
shovels it on for McDonald. Just lacking some coordination at the moment as Justin Marshall goes for a probe. Almost slipped through. Inside the 22. Diving over the top is Dion Muir. And a bit of a scuffle, but it will result in a penalty to the Crusaders. Straight as a die from Andrew Mertens. That's three penalty goals for him tonight. Nine points to three, about 11 minutes out from halftime. Not a lot of players been in the opposition 22s, but it, I think the Crusaders have controlled position better. They've had the, more of the position and certainly have controlled a little bit better than the Chiefs. Chiefs' big problem in 1998 was winning games away from home. They only won two in Brisbane and Bloemfontein. And that was one of the reasons they finished mid-table. Here is Lehman, Lehman, Lake, Lehman. Come back, come back, goals. Get there out of the tree. Justin Marshall, or it should be. Hold there. No, 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 no. Players coming around all over the place here. That's crazy. Let's get it right, Hunt. No, yes, once your hands course. are on the ball, they can come around. It's a new law this year. Once your hands are on the ball, it's out. Okay? So, very clear explanation by Paul Harness. Well, that's right, Murray. He said once your hands are on the ball, it's a new rule, you can come around. But I just wonder if Marshall is just pushing this to the boundary at the moment. Just teasing Duggan a little bit there. No, no, no. Front row slipped. Front well, row I've been slipped. assured there are no new laws. Uh, they're just different interpretations, uh, Murray. Variations of the variation. Just wait, just wait for the call. Just hold. Hold there. And go. Straighten it, straighten it. Uh, of course, the emphasis break on up. the tackle ball rule has been a good one, I think. They've clarified that very clearly to all of us. Crouch. Engage. Break up. Yeah, yeah, no, no. First time it is. Okay, let's just slow it down. Well, right. the scrum certainly haven't been a pretty sight so far tonight. Holds. Engage. Uh, it's against you, Dog, mate. No, you can't because it's a scrum. Well, he had to pick on one team and the other, Greg, to just to sort the whole thing out. Yeah, it's frustrating, isn't it? Frustrating for the players, the referee, and uh, also for spectators alike. So it's important that the players sort this out because they want to play rugby. At the moment, it certainly is very messy. Well, of course, the Super 12 has been a classic example of open running rugby in past years. Last year, we saw a, more of a concentration getting into defence. Offensive defence, we called it throughout the season. I would have thought this year there would have been so much innovative thought put into attack, particularly from set play. So as this uh, Super 12 unfolds, have a look for attack from set play. It's got to be the easiest piece of, or phase, should I say, to attack from. Black Adder for the Crusaders. Near the 10 metre line in Chiefs territory. They lead by 9-3 to three to the home side. Now they've got something going here. Mark Hammett. Marshall looking for quick clearance to Mertens. Away for Ralph. Supporters there from Angus Gardner, as it often is. Launch defence, though, by the Chiefs so far. Now Mertens. Chance here with Blackadder. He had Steve Surridge standing out wide, but the captain still going. Five out from the 22. Marshall down the blind side. The Chiefs read it well, though. They'll have to bring it to the open. Mertens. Away for James Kerr. Now Marshall again. Mertens runs to the line. Gibson. Daryl Gibson's only 10 metres short. Marshall. Mertens again. Kerr. Up for Surridge. Just out in the corner. Side though, against the Chiefs. Oh, that was outstanding play by the Crusaders there. That is classic Crusaders getting the position, getting it behind, but what an incision by Gibson. And that was where the movement really got going. Gibson got in behind, he created the pressure. Yes, it was a snappy pass from Mertens to Gibson, but so tricky on his feet, Gibson. You saw him regain his balance and straight away he stepped off his right and set up the next phase. 
Well, talk about the next phase, Murray. This takes me back to last year, and this is where the Crusaders were so potent, close to the opposition line with their line-out ball. No interference on jumpers, guys. So Mark Hammett to make the throw. Reuben Thorne does the jumping. Blackadder drives on him. They release it quickly. There it is for Justin Marshall. Goes open side. Ralph throws a very ordinary pass. Marshall gets it back though. Dragged down by Glenn Marsh. Still holding are the Chiefs. They've had a lot of defending to do. And here's an even better attacking opportunity. Yes, I think the uh, Crusaders didn't go to their plan there. I think the plan was to keep the ball up. Murray wouldn't have been from that line out. They went to deck and then they had to release it. But Smithy, you're right, you nailed it. The defence and the line out the Chiefs was great, wasn't it? Actually, they conceded the throw and they had an eight-man opposition shoved, basically, and they never gave an inch. Scrum goes down, and the referee comes up with a penalty. Well, now here's a decision for Todd Blackadder. He's passed up the opportunity just a minute or so ago, but this is a guilt-edged three points, and he'll take it. It's a tough decision on the Chiefs. I think I heard Ross Cooper talking during the week. It may not have been Ross, but he said that uh, referees often give penalties at scrum time, which is a bit of a worry because most of the time, unless they played in the front row, they haven't got a clue who caused the problem. Robbie Dean's kicked a lot of penalties here at Lancaster Park or Jade Stadium. He's watched Andrew Mertens convert four so far tonight. 12 to 3 as Feeney restarts. Claimed by Maxwell as Willis goes over the top of him. Two youngsters who could figure very prominently in the All Black picture towards the end of the season. Marshall jabs the kick forward. Back gets Reese Duggan with that explosive pace of his. Just hasn't had the service that Justin Marshall has been able to have. Here's the ball coming out with Andrew Mertens. Quick a transfer to Soalo. He had to stop, though. He was too flat, far too flat. Canterbury endeavouring to play this game at real pace. Maxwell waiting for McDonald to get there. Now Blackadder gets into the gap. Good pace. Over the top he goes. Who said he couldn't run? Ten out from the 22. Caleb Ralph. Mark Hammett. Hammett looking for the support. Hammett getting hammered. Marshall. Pops up for James Kerr. Crusaders in full cry. Looking to bring up the first five-pointer. Marshall takes a bit of a dive. Well, she was a great Hollywood, all right. Dion Muir is going to be pulled out. Well, he might be lynched if he left the field at the moment. Oh, boy. It wasn't. He's got to wait for my call, OK? When the guy's got has both his hands on the ball, the ball is out. When he's, he's reaching in, he's not actually touching the ball. He can't come round. I've warned this guy before about a professional foul. Marshall on the far side. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt for that one, all right? Because he felt the halfback reach in, but we can't have it again, all right? Thank you. Wait for my call, thanks. Cheers. If you don't mind me saying, Mr. Honus, I reckon that's absolutely ridiculous. For you to say he has to wait for my call. I think that's absurd. If the rule is there, when the hand goes on the ball, the opposition player... It's he's entitled to make the decision when he should play it. Of course, if he disagrees with you or the referee, then he loses a penalty like Dion Muir did then. This is where it is. This is Marshall putting his hands on there. And Muir going in. Going in a bit high as well. So there's the two hands on the ball. So Muir was probably quite right in what he did. Execution, I don't think, was there. It was a bit high.
to be punished. Burton's lands another one. 15 to 3. The other interesting call about the referee's decision there was the ball was actually being held by one of the counter, one of the uh, Crusaders players who was actually lying on the deck, just holding the ball there, waiting for Marshall, who put both hands on it. And a controversy just before half time. Crusaders, though, well in control at the moment. Marshall down to Ray Hunter. Now he can spark something from the back. Along with uh, Todd Miller, these guys can really go. But the Canterbury Crusaders' defence is the best no, in the competition. The no, got and the, the Chiefs will have the ball at the start. Well, we saw an indication there that Miller knew he had to run. They are not getting this position. Try and, try and, and we can see their time and position well in favour of the Crusaders. And that is why no they're balls. leading by 15 points to no three. Ball, no Miller ball. saw that and he tried to attack. And they didn't seem to have anything on either, Greg, did they? The, the Crusader defence came up four or five men flat. And they didn't have any plan, the Chiefs, from broken play. I think the runners off the ball need to change angle. Give, uh, give Miller some opportunities. They didn't do it. They just stayed on the outside. Free kick given to the Crusaders. Hammett. Marshall fires it away for Mertens. Here's a test for Todd Miller. Lost it four. Out there for McDonald's. So they just keep coming. The red and black wave at the moment. Haven't been able to get it across the line. That was well timed again. Mertens caught in possession. And this will be Chiefs ball. Well, the timing of the tackle was superb. Again, it was uh, looked like Dylan Meeker again. He came from the blind side of Mertens. You'd never see him coming from here. The ball's out. He's onside. Here he comes. Timed it nicely. Well, they tell me Mr. Honus used to make his uh, home here in Christchurch. You wouldn't believe it at the moment down here. Yeah, he lives in Hamilton now, uh, Smithy. I think it's the best place it? for him. <laughs> I don't know. Right here, he's got a home in Hamilton and a flat in Christchurch. Thank you. Here's Muir. Duggan. Just haven't had the ball in the first half, and here they are kicking it away again. McDonald's. And he puts it out on the full, but it doesn't really matter anyway. That's half time. We've had no try scored in the first half. Five penalty goals to Andrew Mertens, one to Blair Feeney, and the Crusaders lead at the break by 15 to 3. As away we go, Blair Feeney with the kick out, reaching in and grabbing it as Maxwell. Outstanding play again from Norman Maxwell. Marshall with the probing kick. Ray Hanna waits. Kerr arrives. And Ray Hanna's knocked it forward. Or has he? No, I think it was just a line call. Duggan for Feeney. They've got to do something in the second half. The Chiefs, they really produced very little in the first spell as Matt Cooper tries to pack it ahead. And we go to the first line out of the second half. Well, very interesting signs early on. The uh, Chiefs with the ball they got attacking from uh, well inside their own half. They have to do it, but probably need to keep the ball in hand. They tend to get it wide and try to kick it through. Keep it in hand, create ruck play. Well, that's both from the coach's perspective at half time. Ross Cooper's message was quite simple. He said, we've got to learn to scrum. And from Wayne Smith's point of view, he said more of the same. He wants better body position at ruck and mall time. So Ross Cooper not happy with the scrum. Duggan clears it away for Feeney. Now Roger Randall, who had no opportunities, New Zealand's top try scorer in first class rugby last year. That might be the first time he's touched the ball in the match. Feeney across towards the left wing side. But not really ideal, that, because all it's done is give Norm Maxwell another ball in the line-out. Just to complete the half-time news, the news on Todd Muller, bruised ribs. He's had the stoppage about 20 minutes into the game. He got some treatment. He hasn't fully recovered. He's had some dreadful injury problems over the years, Todd Muller. Let's hope he's not played that way in 1999. Interesting, that statistic showed that the Chiefs have won the only two line-outs against the throw. So they've only got 25% possession and two line outs against the throw were part of that. Well, there's another one as Hammett throws it directly to Glenn Marsh. 
And a scuffle up. going on here. Break up, break up. Break up. Yeah, 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 it's all right. Well, if you get another look at this one, look to the back of the line out. That's where the problem was. Some terrible interference there. Yes, Reuben Thorne pulling down uh, Ian Jones. Ian uh, Jones taking exception to that. Six Canterbury yeah. and four the White Kitter. Yeah. And six Canterbury after the ball and four. Into with him. Yeah. So that's how you saw it? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think he got it wrong. <laughs> yeah, so four in the field with six red. Okay, just a minute. It was very clearly the other way around on the TV screen. The touch judge will be embarrassed tomorrow morning when he looks at the replay. I heard it from you too. What, did you, yeah, what was your call? Instruction on Jones, I didn't see the category. It's interesting because I've got, I've got an, uh, a, a different version from Neville. Neville said uh, four in the field with six red. And you were saying someone in the field with... I saw the uh, interference on uh, Ian Jones. On Jones. Yeah. Right. Yes, uh, touch judge Wallstrom got it right. You'll see it here. Reuben Thorne puts the arm around Ian Jones. There it is there. Pulls him down. And certainly touch judge on this side got it wrong. It was uh, interference by Reuben Thorne. Well, as a neutral umpire... So we'll have the line out again. We'll right. start from scratch, okay? Let's just leave the jumpers alone. I've got two versions from both two touch judges. Well, you can't blame them, Mr. Honus. I here. guess this is about the only time I've ever agreed so with uh, going again. up to the man in the sky who can say, oh, I saw it very right, clearly. Two, two versions from the touch judges. Up we come. It's all right, so it's all right. we'll it's try the line out again. Come. Uh, come on, come on. You've got time to retire. You've got time to retire. Mark Hammett gets a chance to get it right this time. He does so. Taken down by Blackadder. Well, they're backwards here, the Crusaders. A great turnover by the Chiefs, that one. Yep, they made a decent box of it. Dylan Meeker coming from a long way back. Now Duggan. Feeney. Little makes a shocking mess of it. Daryl Gibson. What a try, Daryl Gibson! Well, that's what they all came to see. The Ken Tabs are dancing in the streets. They've been waiting, how many weeks was it since the last game? For that try, their, their man. But it was the first decent piece of ball that the Chiefs really had, and Walter Little blew it. And there he goes. Have a look how many people he beat here. That's one. That's two. That's three. McLeod slips off, and he outran the cover defence. Great try. Outstanding play by, uh, by Gibson, but the Chiefs really... They should not have given him this try. A bad kick there, and then the defence, as you mentioned, Murray, by Ray Hana. But look at the aggressive running by Gibson. McLeod should have had him. He didn't, and Gibson scored. A little bit of magic from Darrell Gibson. Blows the game apart. 20 points to three. And is he delighted? Well, perhaps we can look for a change in that Chiefs front row straight after half time. Briggs is getting ready. Ross Cooper's had enough. Unfortunate to lose Lee Lidgard in the days leading up to this game, the Chiefs. Then Marsh takes it to the setup. Here's Reese Duggan. Now Dion Muir has to play halfback. Not really the right time to have a go though, I thought. Here's a Royce Willis. Now Duggan shovels it on to Feeney. Nowhere to go. Back to Willis again. Lost the ball in the tackle of Gibson. Number 12 for the Crusaders doing everything right at the moment. Well, the Chiefs haven't had the ball and when they got it there they lost it. And okay, really substitution. just not hanging onto the ball, not creating phases. And as you mentioned before, Murray, they are not getting any of the go forward momentum they're looking for. Well, they had, a, they had a sniff of it there. They had two or three phases actually going forward. I think Royce Willis 
lost the ball in the tackle there, he'd be very upset about that because he's great on impact, Willis, normally. But uh, they, 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 they strung a couple together, Greg, for the first time, really. And they needed to produce that ball going forward to give those backs a bit of a chance. Substitution has been made. David Briggs into the front row. It's gone, fellas. It's gone. Looks as though he's gone to the loose head side. And Michael Collins has moved across. Yes, that is the case. So Briggs number 18 on this loose head side. Well, it's a good opportunity to prove a point for Briggs coming on in this situation where the scrum hasn't gone well. Scrum time. Yeah, we cut that one, goals. You've just gone down. You've gone down. Pretty hard for Michael Collins, though, to move across from loose head to tight head. But he's not he's not an over big front row forward. He looks more the physique of a loose head, really. Matthew Cooper, outside the 22. Kick and chase. Marshall across. Cooper on Marshall. Ball falls for Glenn Marsh. Now Duggan. Bruce Rayhunter needs a bit of space. Body slammed by Marshall. There it is again. Loose ball for Hammett. No advantage. Lost forward goals. No advantage. No advantage called by Paul Honus. So Scrum, Canterbury Crusaders. And you can yeah, sense so the Chiefs are well. trying to get something going here, Greg, but they just can't crack it. Just hold, just hold. Engage. Stay on, eight. Stay on, sir. Solid as a rock again. Surridge slips it nicely to Marshall. Sees the gap. Reuben Thorne was in good support. Tackle made by Glenn Marsh. Now it's handed back. Hannah gets them going. Mertens. Cooper having to give it, get across. Soalo closing. Well, that was a beautiful kick by Mertens, wasn't it? He knew exactly what he was doing. Putting it in the corner, but not into touch. Forcing the Chiefs to find touch. And now Canterbury ball. Great opportunity from this lineout. So I'm picking it's going to be on Norman Maxwell. That's Norman Maxwell in the middle of the lineout. Same trend as the first half. Let's see if they try and score from the drive. So what is it? It's a consolidate call. And produce the ball going forward or do it yourself. Looks to me like they're going to produce the ball from their backs. Great body position, isn't it? Ten metres short of the line. They've lost control of the ball. Lost forward, fellas. Lost forward. So there he is, Scott Robertson, busting on sure to get on this field. Very hard when you've got a such a good rugby player like this batting to make a, a starting line out because Angus Gardner, of course, is equally as good at open side flanker. Two slightly different footballers. They both have their strengths for sure. Big scrum here for the Chiefs. Controlled in the back by Muir, but they're on the backward move again. And Duggan gets it down towards the 22. But one of the best attacking halfbacks in the country has had no opportunities at all to spark something tonight. It'll come to the time soon when Duggan won't be looking for touch there. He may have to bang it long and try and have some offensive tackling on the Crusaders and turn the ball over because at this stage now they'll give the ball away, Crusaders in position again. Straight off the top, Maxwell here's Gibson almost there Daryl Gibson in top shape tonight Crusaders desperate to get it back well just a hair's breadth again for Daryl Gibson Let's have a look there, and we may get a chance to see what happened with uh, with Daryl Gibson there. I would suggest he's gone through Feeney's tackle, one off the fence. Let's have a look, see what happens from here. Looks as though he may have just lost the ball there. Couldn't be seen, but uh, the defence of the Chiefs needs to get a little bit tighter and close. Yes, it was a great secondary tackle by Glenn Marsh, really, but it looked like as he hit the deck, he sort of lost it forward, which was very... Very hard to see for the referee, I guess, but they've got the opportunity here, haven't they? What a perfect place to score a try from. And you'll notice that on the short side, they've got all the Crusaders have got all their backs on the short side, leaving a huge open side with just Mertens, is it? 
They're going to try and do it through the middle. Here goes Surridge. Almost on the line. There for Justin Marshall. Shoveled on. Solano. Second try. It was only a matter of time. Avato Soalo for the Crusaders. So that's when the big loopy pass does work. Well, we're looking down the barrel, aren't we? And it just kept on coming straight at us. it again here the long pass well summed up good hands in the corner two tries to nil Dylan Meeker now can't hang on to it first was one last one yellow yeah yellow six lost before but really the Crusaders have had it and in every department, certainly in the scrums and certainly in speed to the breakdown the Crusaders seem to be getting there in numbers more the than the Chiefs, and, and even the lineouts, although the Chiefs have won three against the throw, which is commendable. Double change, Glenn Jackson is out there as well for Blair Feeney. So Ross Cooper's gone to the bench pretty early in the second half and has made some big changes. Obviously looking now for some mobility, getting Holton on in place of Muir. Yes, that's right. And also having Jackson there, there he is in shot at first five. We saw for Waikato last year when the spark was required, Jackson came on. He can ignite it, but again, we go back to the, the problem that the uh, Chiefs have got at the moment. They need to get position. Yes, and really, Feeney's a kicker more than the runner, and Jackson's a runner more than the kicker. And they've got a shortage of possession. They, they haven't got the luxury of kicking into, into a zone. So they've really got to take every little scrap they can get. Let's go, let's go. Dylan Meeker is the jumper for the Chiefs. Now can these replacements get something going for the Chiefs? Here's Meeker, straight ahead. Ten out from the 22. Duggan, away for Jackson. Little, shovels it on to McLeod. Cooper up as the extra man. See, there's the numbers there again. David Briggs is number 18. He's another replacement player out there. Now Jackson, indecision. It uh, finally comes up with a little kick which is going to finish up going too far. But that was better play by the Chiefs, attacking the opposition, creating a ruck, hitting it hard from depth. That's what they must do. They, they regain position, but Holton just didn't quite get his lines right. A lot better though. Burton's with the long one. Matthew Cooper in space. Gets it to halfway. Good burst by Matthew Cooper. Handing off uh, Daryl Gibson. Not enough support though for Matthew Cooper making the break. Up we come, taking them goal. Well, Leon McDonald touched down there for the Crusaders in the dead ball area. Probably his last touch for the game. Daryl Lilly coming on for him. I think that's another classic example of numbers to the ball. Crusaders really have got it in this area. Cooper doing extremely well, making the break, going over the advantage line, and then it was just sheer weight of numbers. These boys in the red and black, they got there and got the turnover. Hey, fellas. Oi, 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 oi. Break up. Well, Murray, you mentioned about no, speed to the, to the breakdown at the start of the game. That is starting to take its toll, isn't it, at the moment? Crusaders are getting there. Chiefs aren't. And if they need to speed the game up, they've also got to get there quick. Starting to lose patience. You must wait for the call. Well, I haven't called it. Sit and hold. Engage. Big statistic that one. 18 reset scrums. Leg half. Watch it half. Crowd hollowing to the referee. We saw an incident there as some arms were pushed down for Cooper. Inside is 22. Now he kicks it into the wide open space and sits up nicely though for Soalo. Lily's ranging up. He's strong, the young fella. Soalo almost got through. 22 metre line goes again. 
Todd Blackadder. Come back. 15 short of the Chiefs line. Marshall for Mertens. Short ball to Kerr. There it is, there it is. Not controlled. Mertens shovels it back again for Justin Marshall. Lobs it across again for Blackadder. Hammett. Three metres out. And they'll go to another scrum. So it looks like John Akarangi has uh, come into the chief side. Now he's another player who's played for the Crusaders. Certainly in the squad a couple of years ago, then got a nasty, I think it was a broken arm, which ruined the season. The power of the Crusaders pack. And the Chiefs fight back well. Surridge forced to hand off to Marshall. Good recovery in that scrum by the Chiefs. Mertens. Soalo has been so dangerous. Lost forward, goal seven. And the ball was lost forward initially by Glenn Marsh. Reese Duggan is doing a lot of good work around the uh, the scrum area there for the Chiefs. And uh, the pressure there initially, but the Chiefs scrum came back and Duggan was able to get in and uh, not allow the ball to come out. Get holes. And goes. So this has been the problem area really, hasn't it? The scrum. This is the facet of play that's caused the most disruption. Paul Honus, right from the start, has emphasised it. He's tried to get it right. It hasn't got, it hasn't come right. Just crouch and hold. Hold. No, just hold. Hold. And go. 18. 18. Well, that's a very brave call. It's How could you name number 18, I guess? 18 took it down. Okay, so very clear explanation. 18 took it down. Let's have a look at that as they hit. And Briggs goes, curls under. Well, uh, both of them are down, really, but uh, I guess from the side of the scrum that he's on, Honus could probably see over the top Briggs going down, but really both front rows went down on this side twenty minutes remaining in the super 12 opener Maxwell now the goal line is there for the taking if the Crusaders can control this one they need to keep making progress Turned over. But not out of the woods. Yes, it was a vital turnover underneath the sticks. A try was imminent. Duggan probably quite surprised to get that ball, but really the clearance not quite as much as he would have hoped, I would imagine. Yeah, that's a telling statistic, isn't it, Murray? Time in possession, the 22, well in favour of the Crusaders. And uh, that is why it's 27 points to three. Crusaders well in control. Blood bin in the Crusaders front row. Greg Somerville's off. They cue it on. Another opportunity here for the Crusaders. Five metres out from the line. Mertens. They're going to go wide. Breaks down a midfield. We've got a ball, Reed. We have a ball. There it is for Marshall. Nicely. Good hands here. Four. Hand off of Roger Randall. Me, 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 me. Feet made some ground. No, in fact, it was the new man, Hewitt. That's Feet. Hands away. Mertens to Ralph. Daryl Lilly. Again, the Chiefs being called on to make lots of tackles. Too many players on the ball. Well, once again, points to the Crusaders. They mucked it up in the midfield, and they recovered. How they got away with that, I'll never know, but they did, and they maintained possession. And right at the death, when they were outnumbered, they still got the scrum. This looks better. Screw, no, screw. Mr. Honus maybe should slip around this side of the scrum and have a look. Pretty clear on that occasion, Greg Feek going down. On your side, red tight in. Hold there. No, no, no. No locks, no locks. Hold. Engage. Up we come. Well, 
once the scrum goes down, the referee is obliged to blow the whistle. Yes, I agree, Murray. I think on that occasion there, Greg Peak well, went down on his knees, and uh, I think the referee Honus may need to come around this side. So there's a bit of both uh, hap happening on both sides. Well, down they go again. Well, he made the right decision, although uh, it sounded like it was a tit for tat thing where he said, I'm going against you this time, Red. No, I'm not getting at you, Paul. It's just there's been so many penalties at scrub time, it's been disappointing. Glenn Jackson's kick is off the side of his boot. Now, let's uh, try and sort this out. The arm goes down, which is illegal for a start. So, really, there are problems on both sides. Just hold, just hold, just hold, please, uh, hold the ball, please. Okay, it's all yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. John Akarangi. Contesting possession and grabbing it was Reuben Thorne for the Crusaders. Hands off. So there it is on the Crusaders side. Marshall for Mertens. Change of tactics. Matthew Cooper waits. Bounces loose. Robertson. 22. No. Yes, 22. Number 22, that is. Scott Robertson. Boy, I wish the referees wouldn't do that. When he says 22, what do you think? Number 22. Well, it's a classic up and under by Andrew Burton. Absolutely too. Very hard for Matthew Cooper because it was so well contested, which is the key. And what a debut onto the field, screaming loud so the referee heard him. That's the classic impact player's opportunity, isn't it? Well, you're right. The execution of the kick is all important here in the situation like that. The chase was good, and the end result is Robinson goes over, and it's a seven-pointer to the Crusaders. What's he trying to do to us? He's number 21 anyway. Well, I'll try and keep you updated. There's another change here in the Crusaders' front row. Somerville's gone back on, and Feek's coming off. He has had a very good 65 minutes or so, Greg Feek. Glenn Jackson, 34 to 3. Now the Crusaders will be angling for the bonus point, Just which comes with four tries. OK. There's not much to salvage out of this for the Chiefs at the moment. Bruce Rayhana, all these attacking options. Now Roger Randall. He loses it. One mistake after another. Surridge with good speed. No tackling at all from the Chiefs. Hands off, goal tackler. Hands off. Come back, one, one. Come back. Marshall to Mertens. James Kerr thought there was somebody on the outside. No, double knock on. First one was by Reed. Double knock on. Your scrum goal. Yes, we will see the knock on here, and it's uh, Kerr takes it, tries to flick it on, goes forward. But the Chiefs, they have position, but they're so far in their own half. They need to get into the opposition half and then try and dictate play. Look at the scrum from the Crusaders again. Dylan Mika. Good man, thank you. Duggan for Jackson. Walter Little. No room for the 50 test veteran tonight. Here's the captain, Michael Collins. He's lost it. Picked up by the opposing captain, Todd Blackadder. Marshall into the gap. 22 metre line, Chiefs territory. He hands it away. And the Chiefs, in fact, lost it forward. Smithy, on the sideline there, what's the, uh, is it pretty slippery out there? The ball seems to be going to deck a lot in the tackle. Yeah, I spoke to the trainer, the Crusaders trainer, and he told me that a lot of the players had commented at halftime that it was very hard to change direction. That uh, is one of the reasons, I guess, for the amount of turnovers. But uh, it, I think from the Chiefs' point of view, a lot of it you can put down to Crusaders' pressure as well. Norm Maxwell's off, Steve Lancaster on for the Crusaders. Steve Surridge. Knock on. Scott Robertson can't hang on. Come off the hand first, boys. 
Well, Murray, while we get this opportunity, I'll ask you this question now. We came to this ground with three very serious locking candidates for the All Blacks, and Norman Maxwell, Royce Willis and Ian Jones. But the fourth one, Todd Blackadder, I think, has won the points tonight. Well, he's done a great job, hasn't he? It's, it's an example of this new game, of course, with lifting the lineouts. Players like Todd Blackadder have actually got a place. Here they go again, Surridge to Marshall. Just have a look at that scrum again. The Chiefs were under so much pressure, nobody could hook the ball. Just have a look at this. Yes, and the end result was very, very fortunate for the Chiefs because Roger Randall comes in off his wing. You can see him there, and he hits Marshall. There was another try for the uh, Crusaders. Duggan kicks it away and clears it out to the 22. Games carrying on, though. As Darrell Lilly takes it. So Arlo is near the 22 as the Crusaders try and mount another attack. On the deck. On the deck. What's the ball when it goes to touch me? But really, Smithy, going back to your point on the locks because they are all on stage here. Certainly, Todd Blackadder and his partner Norman Maxwell have, have shone, but. It's an example of a forward pack having a tendency, you know, it's a lot easier when you've got the ball. It must be so disconcerting for so many of the Chiefs players, particularly in the back line. But you see the look of despair in their eyes when you get close-ups from our camera work. Just hold, hold in the crouch. In game. It's run this time for the Chiefs. They've got a tight hit. So it gives Mika an opportunity to go forward. So they can do it, the Chiefs. Jackson. A little is held up by Mertens. Jackson. They're in Crusaders territory and they've turned it over. Lilly. But Gibson, the man who scored the first try. And a double knock on. And they're still struggling. Just hang on to the ball. Well, that was a real, real indication there of the speed of the uh, Crusaders forwards. They were rushing there. Robinson was there quick. And although the Chiefs were on attack, when there was a breakdown, the Crusaders got there faster. Yes, well, it moved away again, so it was the long track for the Lucys for sure. Duggan for Jackson, McLeod, Jackson again. Ray Harner looking to slice through in centre field. Then Marsh is there. Did he? That's good. Akarangi. Leaves it on the ground and Caleb Ralph is the only one there who can pick it up. Once again the Crusaders first to the loose ball. Marshall. Soalo with his pace is coming smartly. Well controlled by Cooper. Off the ground, off the ground. The ball is up off the ground. Now it's down again. Marshall, the curve. James Kerr brings up the bonus point for the Crusaders. Well, that's the one they wanted, the fourth try. Burton's now to take it into the 40s. the try, so Arlo with a quick follow through 41 points to 3, it was just a pop pass here, and Nick Holton didn't have the speed to contain James Kerr Well they're making so many substitutions now over on the sideline that Robbie Deans has to help the referee hold up the cards the triple change here, Marshall's coming off for Flynn, looks like Cutts is going on for Hammond, Caleb Ralph's coming off for the centres for Nathan Major They've cleared the decks Jackson restarts. Taken down by Lancaster. Seven! Seven goals! Get out of there! Aaron Hold Flynn, back, who played back. such a huge part in the Super 12 success last year when Marshall was injured. Jab through by Mertens cleverly. Gibson. And Matthew Cooper's been round a while. He knows what to do. He controls it. As Kerr takes it ahead. 12 metres on the Chiefs' side of halfway. 
They're rampant at the moment. Not Flynn's on. dropped it though. Cross forward. Hold, just hold. Engage. Side. Scrum's under pressure. Once Keep more. They've been penalised for disintegrating. Well, that's a new one. They're hungry for another one, the Crusaders. With plenty of time. Back the Crusaders to win tonight by 13 and over. They're looking pretty good. So how much would that be, does they? Well, we're listed around about three dollars, Murray. I think most people thought this would be a close game, but it's been anything but a close game. It's been all about possession. Chiefs have had very little of it. Reuben Thorne. Still in control of it. Here they go again. Steve Lancaster. Well, hasn't he done well since he's been on this boat? Took the last kick off beautifully, drove through, and nails a try. Number 22. Try number five. And what a contrast to the same fixture last year where Andrew Mertens couldn't take a trick with the boot landed one out of seven or eight That's good. 48 points to three well the story of the night has been the Chiefs have been out muscled up front and here it is again the line out was taken, the drive was on and over goes Lancaster talk about the story of the night uh, when we go back to the, the kickoff we saw the Chiefs trying a quick kickoff and they didn't go 10 metres turns over ball to Crusaders halfway scrum great opportunity again to attack stay on goal Mertens shovels it on quickly Lily is on the halfway Holton there quickly to win the loose ball now they've got a chance a little out to midfield where McLeod can get going. Support coming from Walter Little. Now Glenn Marsh. Ten out from the 22, the Chiefs have left it behind. Holding on, Tekla. It's still not really enough players to the ball. They were running forward, there's still only one player in support. Away goes Scott McLeod. Duggan to Jackson. But just look at that gang defence from the Crusaders. Nothing much has changed in 12 months. So the Chiefs are splitting their attack. Good attacking option. And they're not going to get it. Have a guard it from the scrum. The first penalty they got of the night, they actually signalled their intention with a with an up and under on the fullback. That was a long time ago. Akarangi. Now Willis. Well and truly overshadowed tonight. Royce Willis and Ian Jones. Duggan. McLeod fires it out to Little. Solid defence by Nathan Major. Struggling to get numbers to the ball, the Chiefs. Real scramble, 10 metres out. Now Duggan. Jackson, Marsh. Oh, big defence. Three of them hit Glenn Marsh. Your scrum, going backwards. That was huge. No, don't be silly, not now, not now, not now. Not now, there's a minute to go. Just leave it, just leave it. Good stuff. Engage. 23 points tonight for Andrew Mertens. For the playing through champions. Scrum. Hold, engage. Okay. No, wait, 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 wait. So back we come. Wait 
Well summed up by the referee. Mertens puts it out. The game is over. The Crusaders start the best possible way. The fans are happy at Jade Stadium. They scored five tries. Andrew Mertens kicked 23 points. And really it's hard to find anything positive to say about the Chiefs tonight.